Welcome to Killer Women with your host, best-selling author, Danielle Girard. The Killer Women Vodcast is pleased to be a part of the Authors on the Air Global Radio Network. To learn more about Danielle and her books, visit her at www.daniellegerard.com and to access all of our vodcasts, go to youtube.com forward slash authors on the air. And now, Danielle's next killer woman. So welcome so much to the second episode of the Killer Women podcast. I am here with my special guest, amazingly talented and a wonderful friend and human, Kimberly Bell. So Kimberly is the USA Today and internationally best-selling author of seven novels, including her recently re- released My Darling Husband, which came out on December 28th, and The Marriage Lie, a Goodreads Choice Award semi-finalist for Best Mystery and Thriller. Her books have been published in more than a dozen languages, wow, and have an option for film and television. A graduate of Agnes Scott College, Kimberly divides her time between Atlanta and Amsterdam. That Ah. is an exciting (laughs) life. Kimberly, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I love it. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be here. And we're going to talk about um, My Darling Husband, which is your newest release. (laughs) And some fun um, descriptors of My Darling Husband are unmissable, twisty page turner, gripping, intense, and utterly binge-worthy. And I definitely agree. My Darling Husband was a one sitting read for me, and I was lucky enough to get my hands on an ARC, and I'm very grateful for that. And if you haven't mm-hmm. seen also oh, yeah. the gorgeous cover, and you've got it, <laughs> um, and it is fabulous. That woman, um, yeah, she's the whole, yeah. that's a very, it's a really she's good scary one. looking, isn't she? <laughs> right? She <laughs> is. She's, uh, she's well, and, and just like in the book, she's, a, she's worthy. So um, let's just start with, um, tell us a little about this. You are really a diva of domestic suspense. And so before we dig into sort of where these ideas come from, and um, you're, you're hopefully not your personal experience, which I'm sure they're not. <laughs> um, tell, uh, tell our, those of us who haven't, those who haven't read the book yet, tell us a little bit about My Darling Husband. Sure. So My Darling Husband is the story about a woman named Jade, and she's the mother of two kids. They're seven and nine, and she's a stay-at-home mom. She's coming home one day with the two kids on the back seat, and in all the chaos of getting them out of the car, they're arguing and throwing goldfish and whatever. She doesn't notice the man in the shadows of her garage, and he's wearing a mask and holding a gun, and he basically forces his way inside and holds her and her two children for a crazy ransom sum that he demands from her husband, Cam, Um, and he has to, you know, come up with this money um, by 7 p.m. or else. And that is right. And it's actually <laughs> one of the things I have to say I love best about this book, which is a new for you, um, for me, for you at least, is the, the children, the, you know, yeah. the, um, Baxter and Beatrix and Beatrix in particular, who is a, a violin prodigy and so clever and such a fun part of this plot. So, and we'll talk about her, the, that a little bit, because I, I love that, but I want to talk about moving back. This is your seventh book. Um, and for the, you know, the books of yours I've read, it's really so much, of, not just about domestic drama, because there's kids in a couple of your books, but most often we see you sort of really dig into marriage mm-hmm. and, um, and I know, you know, you're a mother of two, although I know your kids, like my kids are a little older than Baxter. Big and grown, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, thank goodness, right? Oh, those right. days. Out um, of the house. Yes. And, and you're also married, I know, a long time to a very yeah. handsome Dutchman, which is why you end up in um, Amsterdam so often, which is amazing. So tell us about that. Tell us about like the inspiration um, for my darling husband. And then and then maybe we'll talk about sort of in more in general, your this domestic things that, that capture your attention. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I do kind of um, tend to gravitate towards the marriage issue. And I think it's just because there are so many ways that story can go. And, you know, it's a it's such a recognizable um, relationship. Even if you're not married, you can imagine what it would be like to live with someone 
to fully trust them, to think you know what's going on in their heads. And then all of a sudden you discover that, you know, there's a secret, there's a lie, there's, you know, some sort of betrayal. So it just feels to me, that's, I don't know if I'll ever get tired of that um, it's not really a premise, but, you know, just kind of jumping off point for a story. Um, so knowing that about, you know, that's kind of where I always start a story, but when it was time for me to pitch, you know, cause I'm under contract for multiple books. And so I had to, um, pitch a story basically for this book. Um, and I kept pitching idea after idea that they shot down. And for, you know, for a million different reasons, they already had something too similar that was about mm -hmm. to come out or mm -hmm. they didn't think it was, um, you know, the right kind of story for me, um, all different sorts of reasons. But at one point I remember saying to my editor, I flipped it back to her and I said, what would you like to see from me? What are the stories that you think, you know, um, would be a good one for me to tackle, but also, you know, they see, books that are many years before they hit the shelves, right? So they kind of know where They're the coming. market is going. And every editor I've ever met has a wish list of stuff they wanted to receive. So she sent me like five, maybe seven different ideas. And one of them was a mother protecting her home and her family from danger. And as soon as she said that, this idea kind of plopped in my head. And I was like, home invasion, got it, going. <laughs> That is, and let's talk about Jade because another thing about your books, which I love, is that both the male and the female characters are fully formed. We have this, I, you know, you you do you hear stories sometimes, and obviously as women <laughs> and wives, we oftentimes tell only one side of the story, right, which is the right. female side. But um, and you know, and but basically, your books really delve into both the points of view and both the sort of the reasons that the characters do things. But Jade, of course, um, we're obviously, we're rooting for her from the get-go because she's she is the one who is gonna save her children. And I, I love actually that she's not, this is no like damsel in distress who's gonna be saved right. by some white knight. She is in there, like, how do we say, you know, how can I save my family? And she's a force to be reckoned with. So I think that's an interesting thing too. The stories that we've heard traditionally are oftentimes about, you know, women being saved or outside mm -hmm. help. And so what, when your thought process, she did some very clever things and she had done some very clever things that were well sort of set up for her to be able to help her family. And so mm -hmm. what was your thought process in, in making sure you weren't doing the sort of the white knight thing? Cause I think as you know, your readership, we want to see these characters save themselves. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I tend to, like thinking back on my other books as well, my main characters really are the type of women who maybe don't realize how strong they are, but when they're put in a position where they have to be strong and they have to be brave, um, they really kind of step up and and discover their own strengths. So I really, I mean, I'm I'm thinking back of all my books, I don't think I've ever written any other sort of character. So, you know, that's just the kind of, um, women I like to read about. And so totally. I tend to write them as well, but you're right. You know, I mean, especially in a premise like this, when your children are in danger and you're in the same house, but you're even separated. Cause at one point, you know, they're yeah. tied to chairs across the hall and she's in a different room. And, you know, I mean that I think even if you're not a mother, you can understand like yes. what that would be like. And so, yeah. I think you get in that moment, you get really clever and really brave because right. it's not about, you know, your own life. You're there to save your children. A hundred percent. I, I absolutely felt that. And I, and let's just talk also about a, a sort of more junior woman in the story, um, Miss Beatrix, because she uh, manages to escape, uh, not once, but twice from the, um, the home invader and um how fun was that fun she's what nine nine how yeah that? how fun was that to write and and i'm sort of curious too because she's not only is she is she clever she's also sort of a, a violin uh prodigy which in my mind sometimes those two things the, the kind of kid who might escape from a 
um, an armed robber isn't always necessarily the kid I would think of as the violin prodigy. So she's got a nice kind of, um, she's a bit of a contradiction, which is fun too. Yeah. Was there, yeah. what, what uh, was, were you, did, was it your own children? Who inspired you to, <laughs> to write <No. laughs> Beatrice? <laughs> Neither one of my children are musical at all, at all. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, um, I, I wanted to create a kid who on the one hand was maybe, um, was brave. Like you said, she does a couple of things and she, she's smart. She escapes, she, you know, manages to, to, um, not necessarily save herself, but definitely, you know, cause a ruckus in the whole uh, kidnapping plans for sure. Um, but I also wanted somebody who was, you know, like for the mother, and this is me putting in myself in Jay's shoes, you know, I mean, on the one hand, you want your kid to escape and you want them to like, you know, do these maybe reckless things, right? but only if they're going to work, right? Right. So how terrifying is that? If you're tied to a chair and you see your daughter right. walking down the hall, you're like, run, right? Like, you know? Right. So and absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to give her, you know, kind of maybe too much bravery mm -hmm. for the reader and for the for the mother. Um, but she's a smart kid and she she's got it figured out for sure. And she pulls she it was off. fun. And she I can imagine she was and you, you know the funny thing about it is I feel like we really got to know her, but we're never in her point of view. So it no. isn't as though we're inside her head, but we from her behavior and the things she does right from the moment they're in the kitchen. She's already yeah. thinking and I, um, so she was, it was super, super clever. So let's talk a little bit now about the, um, the sort of more gray, the grayer um, characters in the book because Cam, um, who is a successful restaurateur that we, or that's, you know, that's a big man um, in Atlanta. And, you know, he definitely, he's, he's not as, Jade is our, well, for one, like you said, if, if Cam were in the house with the kids, his, his sort of goal would be very straightforward. Unfortunately, he's not in the house with the kids. He's trying to drum up $734,296, which is a very yeah. specific um, yeah. sum. And maybe you want to touch on that, but talk to me a little bit about sort of in developing a character who has done maybe not everything quite right. Um, but we also are rooting for him because right. if he doesn't pull through, you know, our, our, our other protagonists are in trouble. Mm -hmm. How did you develop Cam? Well, so, you know, one of the big themes in this story is um, money, you know, having it, not having it, needing yeah. it. Um, and so I, I knew going in that I wanted Cam to maybe be a little too focused on um, the outward appearance of having money. Um, and that's partly why I gave him the, you know, job that I did. He's, you know, running this, he's kind of a, a celebrity chef around town. He's mm -hmm. running multiple steak restaurants. Everybody knows him as the steak king. And, yeah. um, you know, so he's, he's very visible, um, which, you know, I also did on purpose for this story, because of course you're not, you know, if you're going to kidnap and hold a family for ransom, you're going to choose someone who you think has that kind of money lying around. Right. But as it turns out, Cam, of <laughs> course, doesn't. Um, so he really has to scramble to pull together the money. And as we're, you know, moving through the story, we also realize that he's maybe, um, maybe cross some ethical lines in his business practices as well. Mm. Um, and that maybe they come back to bite him during the story. Absolutely. And, and, um, and the ransom amount, which, you know, we won't talk about because the, we're not giving away any spoilers here, but it is, a, it was from the very get go when we hear yeah. the amount, it makes us think, you know, what does that relate to? Yeah. And um, it's very satisfying to find out. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was actually a fun, fun detail that I got from not such a fun source, which was a real home evasion that happened here in Atlanta. And oh. they also demanded a very specific, maybe not that large, but a very specific number. And it turns out later, and I think I say this at some point in the book, um, it turns out later that they uh, pulled the a bank statement from their 
uh, mailbox. So oh. lesson number one is lock your mailboxes. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> Okay, or yeah. get, your, get your statements electronically, maybe. Right, but yeah. what I loved about using that as a detail is, you know, automatically you know that this kidnapper, his name is Sebastian, he knows something about this family. There's some sort of connection, even though you don't know what it is until much later in the story, the reader knows from the minute he says that number. I mean, like, right. why not ask for, you know, a, a whole million or, I mean, exactly. what? What is yes. up with that specific number? Exactly. But he has a reason for it. He does. And he's another sort of interestingly moral, morally ambiguous character because uh, in the end, you know, there's there he has some validity. So, um, and we won't, you know, we won't go too much for that. So, um, I this was such a fun book. And I have to say, I, I really do feel like 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 your books you know which is also what you're known for um in addition to sort of you know your your domestic suspense genre you i think are really known for um being somebody whose books just grab you and it's a you know read through the night you know open up give yourself a couple you know a few hours with with a glass of wine or <laughs> a few glasses of wine to to get uh um to read Kimberly's book because it definitely, you do not want to have to put it down and go shuttle children or something. That would be very frustrating. <laughs> well, um, thank you. <laughs> and um, I understand and I'm, 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 I'm going to give a sneak peek of um, your up and coming Audible original, uh, which you co-wrote uh, with some very talented um, co-writers, um, Vanessa Lilly, Lane Fargo and Kate Hollihan. Um, called Young Rich Widows. And before I, yeah. I, I give a, I know the, the, um, re, the preview of the cover, the cover reveal is coming up here. And so we're gonna get, to, I'm gonna get to show it. But I wanna hear um, first, tell us a little bit about that. Um, what's the yeah. book about? That was such a fun project. So it's about four women who they're married to partners at this law firm. Um, it's set in the eighties in Providence, Rhode Island. So we got to like, you know, big shoulder pads, big <laughs> hair, like the whole thing. But these women, um, kind of inherit basically the law firm when their husbands or their partners are, uh, die in a plane crash that is under suspicion of maybe someone was tampering with the airplane. So they get like thrown headfirst into all this, you know, all their their legal cases and there's mob involved. And I mean, it's just crazy fun, over the top, like eighties suspense. It That's was a blast to write. I was gonna say, so is this the first time you've written a book with other writers? Ever, what was that ever. like? It sounds really fun. So it was the fastest book I've ever written, right. the most fun book I've ever written. Um, basically, what we did is we hammered out an outline. Vanessa's the one who came up with the premise for the story. That was her thing. And she's the one who gathered the writers together. And we worked so well together. We hammered out a, an outline. And basically, the chapters go round robin. So each of us is one of the widows. And so we would we would do one chapter a week, but we that was our goal, but then we ended up going so much faster. So each of us would write a chapter and then we would get together and we would go through the chapters and then we would talk through the next chapters and then go back and write. And we just kept going, kept going, kept going until it was done. So, I think we wrote this book in like six weeks. Oh, I mean, that is, that actually <laughs> sounds like perfect kind of writing right you know somebody that who's right there in it with you that is so fun yeah. and a little birdie the, told me you might be maybe thinking about doing another one i heard that from yes you. yes we are working on our out we have our outline for our next book and we're working on our pitch right now so, so and it's gonna the, yeah it's it's you know the first young rich widows the one that uh comes out in april follows well it's kind of one of the widows is kind of the main part of the story. And then, you know, so we're, we have four books planned basically. Oh, we know exactly. Each widow yeah. gets a book. That so, is so fun. Yeah. Well, here, I mean, this is, check out this cover. Um, there's neon colors and uh, 
the eighties. And there are, you should, you have to go look at uh, Kimberly's uh, social media or um, Vanessa, any of them. There are some really fun pictures of them um, dressed in their, um, in their eighties gear. And it's, it is fabulous. I'm hoping there's going to be a, like a launch party at some point where we all get to come. I and, hope so too. <laughs> and get dressed like up in cocktails and put your hair up to here, tease it. That's, right that's our that's our generation right that's our yeah. that's our teenage experience um exactly i'm right there with you okay so that's super exciting your um your co-authored project and i hope there's another one of those i can't wait to download it tell us the date again april i think it's april 14th off the top of my head okay so middle um, of april but we can look yes. at it i'm sure we can we can pre-order it on it on yes. Audible. okay yes, yes we'll for sure We'll yeah. go find that. Okay, and then and then aside from the um, the widows, the widows group, um, what is next for Kimberly Bell? So I just turned in book number eight uh, to my editor, and I am in that weird phase where you know you are done writing, well, done writing the first mm -hmm. big draft, right? And right. then um, and waiting for edits. So um, it's been really oh. awesome, <laughs> right? my baby dog um it's been really awesome and quiet but you know at one point i'll pick it back up again as soon as she sends me her edits but it's a book about a woman an influencer instagram influencer mm -hmm. who um has a post she makes this kind of careless post and it goes viral but in the worst kind of way and basically she's getting canceled um oh, at the wow. same time that her personal assistant goes missing and I mean, everything just kind of goes bad from there, cracks in her marriage and ah. her kids. And it's just, it was a lot of fun to write because it's, you know, the whole Instagram influencer world is crazy right. town. Well, and also <laughs> the cancel culture. We're, I yes. mean, that is another su super relevant um, phenomenon right now. In, yes. um, so I can, yeah, that sounds wonderful. So that would be coming out for us um like around this time next year i would guess okay yeah okay. and we'll hear more about that i know by by following you um uh on your uh social media and so tell us now um remind us facebook instagram website where can we find out more about you yes i'm on all the socials <laughs> Fortunately or unfortunately, um, I am, um, all my links are on KimberlyBellBooks.com, all the socials. Uh, you can just click on the little icons and it will take you straight to my pages. So fun. All right. Well, listen, Kimberly, it was wonderful to get a chance to um, visit you, visit with you today and hear about all the fun stuff you're doing. And I love um, hearing about um, the, the writing, boy, I, all of those inspirations i'm i'm right there with you so um more for more information about kimberly go to kimberlybellbooks.com and that's k-i-m-b-e-r-l-y-b-e-l-l-e books.com and for, you can always find me at daniellegerard.com and we will see you next time on killer women bye yeah, thank you